Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Submarines have been around in one form or another for hundreds of years. But they have never been as versatile or formidable as they are today. Modern submarines are fast, hard to detect, and well-armed. One of the most successful Cold War-era subs in the U.S. Navy's arsenal was the Los Angeles-class nuclear attack submarine. These state-of-the-art vessels were nearly 400 feet long, carried a crew of up to 129 people, and were armed with a wide range of missiles designed to attack targets on land, in the sea, and in the air. Among the most feared weapons in the entire submarine arsenal is the UGM-84 Harpoon missiles. Though available for surface ships and fixed-wing aircraft, the submarine version of the Harpoon is encapsulated in a specially designed container. This is done so it can be launched from underwater via one of the sub's torpedo tubes. Here, we see sailors assigned to the Los Angeles-class fast attack submarine USS Olympia preparing to launch a harpoon missile during RIMPAC, a multinational combat exercise held off the coast of Hawaii. Loading such a sensitive and powerful weapon requires a lot of coordination between crew members and help from several machines. The average harpoon weighs around 1,500 pounds and has a warhead capable of sinking even the largest naval vessels. The crew carefully performs last-minute preparations as the harpoon is guided into the torpedo tube. Once in place, the loading machinery is removed and the tube is closed and sealed. At this point, the weapon is ready to be fired. However, the team must await commands from the bridge first. Standing the bridge rails, clear for aft. Clear forward. Once the target is established, a countdown is initiated and the weapon is sent off toward the enemy vessel. Live fire drills are generally reserved for special occasions known as sink X or sinking exercises. This is where old, damaged, or derelict vessels are used for target practice, allowing crews to get a real sense of how their weapons would work during actual combat. One 
One can clearly see the devastating strikes of these weapons, often causing ships to begin sinking after a single direct hit. From harpoon missiles to torpedoes, the precision with which these munitions strike their targets is very impressive. And though the ships will never sail again, they will end up as artificial reef habitats for undersea wildlife. While submarines form the stealth arm of naval warfare, the real workhorses of the U.S. Navy's fleet are the destroyers. In use since the late 1800s, destroyers were intended to be fast, maneuverable warships, bristling with armaments that could attack land, air, and sea at the same time. Though the United States Navy currently has multiple vessel types in operation, the main guided missile destroyers belong to the Arleigh Burke class. These versatile ships measure around 500 feet long and boast a beam of around 66 feet. Though they weigh nearly 10,000 tons, their four gas turbine engines can push them to speeds exceeding 35 miles per hour. Each vessel is packed with sensor and processing technology to better identify, track, and target enemy threats. One. But the most impressive thing about these ships is their armament. From stern and bow torpedo tubes to vertical launching systems, cannons and guns, nearly every inch of the destroyer's deck features some form of weapon. Unlike those installed aboard submarines, the torpedo tubes on destroyers are generally placed above the waterline. Most Arleigh Burke class vessels feature Mark 32 triple torpedo tubes, which allow three torpedoes to be fired in quick succession. In other cases, the tubes might be placed on the deck. In certain situations, torpedoes might even be loaded onto one of the ship's combat helicopters and dropped from the air. Whatever the method used, the goal is to get the torpedo into the water so that its acoustic homing device and the built-in engine can send it toward its target. In some cases, Torpedoes do miss their mark. When this happens, they will continue traveling until their internal engine runs out of fuel. Still, they are nonetheless live ordinances and they need to be recovered as quickly as possible. Here, the USS Pasadena is participating in such an exercise using a training torpedo. This Los Angeles class attack sub is in the Arctic, which adds an extra level of difficulty to the recovery and refueling process. In this case, the sub coordinates with a helicopter crew to retrieve the torpedo after making a hole in the ice.
modern destroyers are also equipped with a wide range of missiles, including surface-to-air, surface-to-land, and surface-to-sea models. One of the most widely used models is the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow, a short-range anti-aircraft and anti-missile weapon that has been in service for nearly 50 years. Each Sparrow is roughly 12 feet long and 8 inches in diameter, weighing 510 pounds. However, its real advantage is its speed. After launch, the Sea Sparrow can travel at more than 2,600 miles per hour, using semi-active radar homing to intercept aircraft and even fast-moving enemy missiles. As effective as destroyers can be when it comes to taking on a wide variety of enemy ships, few navies could stand up to the sheer power of even a single modern aircraft carrier. For instance, the modern Nimitz-class carrier is nearly 1,100 feet long and 252 feet wide at its broadest point. They can carry around 5,000 crew members at a time and features a wide range of armaments, including many of the same missile systems incorporated on the smaller destroyers. But what really makes the aircraft carrier stand out is its complement of nearly 100 fixed-wing planes and helicopters. Thanks to their ability to launch and recover these aircraft at any point in their mission, these vessels are essentially a mobile airbase at sea. Each aircraft carrier has its diverse complement of planes and helicopters, but one that is almost always present is the McDonnell Douglas F-A-18 Hornet. Small, fast, and incredibly versatile, these twin-engine fighters are uniquely suited to use aboard an aircraft carrier. Aside from their speed and maneuverability, each Hornet boasts a total of nine external hardpoints. These include spaces for wingtip missiles, rockets, and bombs under the fuselage and wing. Since they were originally designed as a multi-role fighter, Hornets can easily be reconfigured with air-to-ground weapons as well. With aircraft like the F-18 patrolling the skies, destroyers patrolling the seas, and subs standing guard beneath the surface, few things are quite as formidable as a fully loaded carrier strike group. That's why it should come as no surprise that these incredible machines of war move so confidently across the ocean. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.